Order in the damn court. I'm Flawzilla and this is a court of flawed. Today, what we will be doing is going through the MGK and Eminem battle and figure out not only who won it on a rap level, but also who was right and who was wrong. Today, I'm going to show y'all the light. There is a reason I'm wearing this robe. This is not a wig. Let's get into this. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop. All rise and sit your ass down. So it all started with a simple little disrespectful tweet from MGK. I just saw a picture of Eminem's daughter, and I have to say, she's hot as fuck. In the most respectful way, because Eminem is king. So let me just start by saying that's disrespectful. I would never say that about Mo to her father. And MGK is supposedly an Eminem fan, which tells me that he knows that Eminem doesn't play that shit when it comes to his daughter. Let's continue. Next, we have MGK going on a YouTube channel called Montreality, where he basically implied that Eminem is washed up and is gonna suck for his next album. Let's see this and then you could, you know, order in the court. What did you think of the Marshall Mathers OP2? What I think of the Marshall Mathers OP2? Um, I'm, I'm still scared to listen to it. I'm scared to listen to it because that's my idol. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first saw this interview, I felt like it was disrespectful then. Now that I know what I know, I know it was disrespectful then. Every white rapper that came out was automatically compared to Eminem and had to live in Eminem's shadow, basically. I can see why a person like MGK would have resentment after a while, implying that you're scared to listen to it because he's your idol. It's almost like a compliment sandwich, which he actually did with the tweet too. He says, Eminem's daughter's hot as f And then he says, with respect. So anyone who would take offense to your daughter's hot as f is bugging because he said with respect and then he did that here i'm scared to listen to it basically meaning i think it's gonna suck because that's my idol he thinks he's slick i, I feel like he's he said all he has to say of course i'm gonna love anything he does but i am have i listened to it no am i scared to listen to it yes do i want to listen to it dude i wanted to listen to it the second i even heard he was recording it you know what i'm saying but i'm like scared to make that step like oh because i don't want to i don't ever want to look at my idol like <sighs> You know, and, and I, I hear so many different things, you know, but I mean, fuck people's opinions, I'll make my own. That was like a Super Bowl compliment sandwich. He dissed him, complimented him, dissed him, complimented him. He has said all he has to say. What would make you think you know when he has said all he has to say? But of course, I want to listen to it, but I don't want to look at my idol like, <sighs> he's basically trying to diss him, but then make it okay because I'm his fan. So next we have MGK going on Ebro in the morning where he basically tells the world that he is now blacklisted from shade four or five because he said things about eminem's daughter in 2012. was it just entertainment when you tweeted eminem's daughter you know at the time i didn't think that that was a thing Good. i'll tell you the situation because this is something that i feel like you know quiet is kept still you know is a is a reason why certain things don't you know what i'm saying like, don't happen right? okay so like pictures of that had you know, had kid came out, and I'm yeah. like, what, 20 years old, 21 at the time, and I'm like, oh my god, she's, and she's beautiful. I said she's beautiful. Yeah. But all respect due, Eminem is king. Yeah. What's wrong with that? What What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that you're lying. We already know that you said hot as. I don't believe that this is an accident that he is using a different word than what he actually said. This is another manipulation technique. Why change the words? He'll try to make it seem like beautiful. How does the same thing? No, it's not. It's not. Sorry to tell you. You could say that there's no sexual implication with how to really look at this for real, for real. What is attraction? Attraction is something that is in us innately. It leads to reproduction. You could say I'm nitpicking, but this is what I truly believe. So what was, so my point, but what was turned into? And, 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 and is there a 15 year age gap where I said, I'm, I'm a creep for that? No. Objection. You were 21, she was 17. That is an age gap. Just respectfully, you're not in the right when you're talking about someone's daughter. You're never in the right. But MGK, he he just doesn't care. He gets messy whenever things don't go his way. What happened? Certain people took it and, and ran and, with it and ran with it and, and hyped and, it up and hyped it up, bruh. A lot of shit went on behind like the scenes. Like I, man, <laughs> like I said, that sucks. Certain yeah. people won't even listen or review this joint. Certain places won't even. You won't even hear Machine Gun Kelly on. Oh, certain things right. won't even happen. And and because of that. And look, man. 
He wants to say something disrespectful, but he knows that if he comes out and does that, it's not the smartest move, but you can see that he's fighting the urge to do it. But it's not for him to be able to coexist. It's for his own selfish reasons. Like he knows that it'll be damaging to him if he does that. He also said, this is why certain things don't happen. Acting like he's actually being hindered, which is crazy because if you talk about my daughter, I'm not promoting you, bro. You think that you could just say whatever you want, be disrespectful and reckless, and I just have to be like, yeah, let him use my platform to grow. No. So to act like it's like some kind of conspiracy against you. Nigga, you did this. Man, fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck. Anybody right? who's the radio hosts are trying their hardest to like help him not do damage to his own career. When he said, fuck you, you heard Ero say everybody, right? Like, no, you know that's not what he meant. You know he meant Eminem. Laura Styles over there go, she makes a face. Peter Rosenberg's just silent. They are trying their hardest to make it awkward and be like, okay, bro, like you're stepping over the line right now. They don't want to burn a bridge with one of the biggest, most famous rappers of all time. It's just not smart, especially when you're the reason that it's all happening. So you've talked about his daughter, said that he might be washed up, and now you're saying, fuck you, because you took offense to my offensive statement. Wild. Let us win, man. Like, help, help. Rally like help like, like, man dude, help us man us. we working help us bro like let me win man stop holding me back everybody gotta stop this sh artists don't go on platforms all the time they just won't even acknowledge your existence until you reach a certain level and you're treating eminem's platform like you're entitled to it that's not how this works you don't see it now but it's the best thing for you if you don't crack mm -hmm. you don't see it right now right. but it's the best thing for you if you don't crack look man this is one of those times I, you say it is what it is it, it, no, it, it, is it, is. It, it, it is what it is, but I'll say it like if this, If you man. don't crack, if you I... don't crack, it's the best thing for you. Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Done! And, and, Done. and finito. <laughs> hey, how about this? And, 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 and you know what? I don't know if you heard that. After Ebro said, if you don't crack, it's the best thing for you. Whoever MGK's handler is said, Done. Like, end that conversation. Before that, Ebro said, if you don't crack, it'll be the best thing for you. He said it three times. Peter Rosenberg said, this is one of those times you just say it is what it is. They're trying their hardest to stop this kid from kamikazing his own career. No pun intended. We're gonna move on. Next, he goes on the LA Leaker show and proceeds to say that Eminem is no longer his favorite rapper because he banned him. I'm my favorite rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45. I <laughs> You're clearly trying to make it seem like Eminem is somehow your rival when all it is is you disrespected someone who has influence and power in the genre and had consequences for it. Next, we have a song with Tech 9 where he throws more shots at Eminem. You gonna need a doctor, I ain't talking about the one from Compton. You gonna need a doctor and I ain't talking about the one from Compton. Basically saying, you had Dr. Dre to help you throughout your career, but when I'm done with you, you will need a doctor to help you, period. Physical threats. <laughs> On the top charts, at the cop car, so remind y'all you just rap, you not guards. No. And I don't care who got bars, because they don't acknowledge my To remind y'all you just rap and you're not gods. Obviously, a uh, slighted Eminem because Eminem had a song called Rap God, basically saying you aren't a rap god. And then he proceeds to say, I don't care who got bars because they don't acknowledge mine. So basically saying, I don't care if you're the greatest rapper ever, you're acting like I don't exist, so I'm gonna act like you don't exist. You could say he's blaspheming. I don't believe in the rap god. That's the evidence portion. Next, what we're gonna do is we are going to hear from the parties themselves. Testimony time. We're gonna hear from Eminem first. He did an interview with Sway called the Kamikaze interview. And this is his side of how this all happened. Uh, you went in on MGK. You guys had a discrepancy. He mentioned it in his response song, uh, Rap Devil. Let's call Sway and ask him why I can't get on Shade 4 or 5. That was in response, so I seen him on the street once, and I didn't know he couldn't come up to Shade at that time. And I said, man, come on up, man. And then I had to see him again and say, hey, man, I don't know what the shit is. Until that gets cleared up, there's no way I can have you on there. Yeah. Well, what's the shit with that? What happened? Well, the shit is, one day, you know you go down the fucking wormhole of YouTube and whatever, right? <laughs> so I see Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So what the fuck? Then he starts doing a, a press run, basically, about Haley. I'm like, what the fuck? My man better yeah. chill. 
He basically banned MGK from Shade 4 or 5 for talking about his daughter, which makes sense to me. I think Eminem didn't want to say it with his own words. Yeah, I blacklisted him from Shade 4 or 5, but the fact that that line of questioning even happened, you know what I mean? because he really could have just struck that whole question from the interview and not even had that part put in there. If Eminem was trying to deny blacklisting him from Shade 4 or 5, I don't think he would have even had him say that. The reason that I dissed him is because when he said, I, I'm, a, I'm the greatest rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45 or whatever he said, right? Like I'm trying to hinder his career, so I give a f about your career. You're not even in the fucking conversation. I don't care if you fucking blow or if you don't blow. It doesn't matter to me. But then when you get on Tech 9s album and you start sending shots, and by the way, this was on the heels of the freestyle he had just did about Shade 45. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. And every time I do that, it makes that person as, as irrelevant as people say I am, am in hip hop, yeah. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, I wanna destroy him, but I also don't wanna make him bigger. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now you're a fucking enemy. He knows that people will shoot at him just to get him to respond to them, which is why I think MGK purposely did all of this. I think that MGK delusionally planned this, thinking that he was gonna beat him now, which is adorable. Did y'all really call Interscope to try to shelve his? No, I, I had never made a fucking call, made a call to Diddy, really? Never happened. It didn't feel like a diss to me, it just felt like pitiful. Uh. Like, ah, oh, now I'm, I'm feeling bad for something I didn't even have to do with. I don't know when it was a theory that he got Machine Gun Kelly's album shelved, but Eminem hasn't lied thus far. MGK has yet to tell the truth. Next, we have MGK giving his side of what led to this. He did an interview with The Breakfast Club where he basically laid out what happened from his point of view. Did you anticipate like him I mean, having anything to say about you or anything? Cause there's been some digs. Yeah, he should have said it six years ago. You know, truth be told, we had handled it behind the scenes really? six years ago. Yeah. It all started with the daughter thing. So what, what did you say now, about his daughter that you, got him so mad? You know what I said. That she's hot. She's you, hot. Have, you have to admit yeah. you was out of line for that. Uh, I I, she was that 15, too, 16. Look, yeah. look, look, one, I didn't know how old she was. Mm. All, all the headlines said was this person that we had known through records has is all grown up. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. made a comment, you know, I didn't feel like it was disrespectful, but I'm a father, I have a nine-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. I get it, 100%. And man to man, I'll tell you, I apologize. Can I take the tweet down? Sure. But public apology? Come on, man. New development. MGK just exposed himself letting that little tidbit out. He said his daughter was beautiful. A call was made. He said he would take the tweet down, would apologize, but not publicly. I feel like if you say it publicly, you should be able to apologize for it publicly. He's making it seem like he's being asked of too much. He's already said he's his idol and sh What's the problem with saying I was out of line, my bad. He is the GOAT, I was bugging. It's someone's daughter and he would have been fine. Actually, he would have probably been respected more. He's saying no to a public apology, even though he knows that TMZ will grab what you say in five seconds and it will be news regardless of if you take the tweet down or not. There is so many stories where it says, this person tweeted and deleted. You know how it works. You have too much pride. So you had the opportunity to squash all this, but then that would have ruined your plans, wouldn't it have? What was wrong with a public apology though, if you felt like you was wrong? Because we're talking about the same guy who Shits on dead people and you know Christopher Reeves who's in a wheelchair. I mean, come that's on, man. It's, yeah. So I mean, I, I I guess look, man. It was a silly comment to have started all of this. I get it if it was like gruesome words were used or like there was you know sexual implications in it. There was, regardless of if you want to acknowledge it or not. In reality, we all know what it is. He also tried to say, I'm not giving him a public apology because he has talked shit about people in the past. Oh, what do you mean? I thought he was your idol. It was all okay before you said something about his daughter. You were totally fine with it. Mm -mm. Nope, that doesn't fly. You apologize behind the scenes, you thought it was done. Yeah. So uh, you... But, but th th that's until, you know. Machine gun R. Kelly line. No, this no, is, you no, were, no, so no, you were no, you were banned I, 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 this, from Shade 45? Yeah, I mean, like, that was what, that's, that's the thing. We had settled it behind the scenes, and then as I continued to try and move about my career, you start to run into these, like, funny little roadblocks. You're like, huh. So you think settling it behind the scenes is not respecting Eminem's wishes? <laughs> People are that entitled. This is why I say this was all manipulation, because what? You're the one in the wrong. What do you mean? You can't just minimize it to Shade 45. Mm -hmm. You got to think about Eminem 
is Interscope. Machine Gun Kelly is Interscope. This man has brought hundreds of millions of dollars to that building. I'm new. It's my first album there. I just came in. Not only did that happen, but at the same time, me and Yellow Wolf were beefing, and mm -hmm. he's up under. Shady. Shady, yeah. Right. So the building automatically is like this. Box you out. I think that's a little difficult for a new artist to have to overcome. Okay, though. But the problem comes when people that are assigned to work for me aren't working and they're picking sides. Like you said, he has brought hundreds of millions of dollars to that building. What would make you think that as a new artist, people are gonna side with you over the dude that really gave them a job in reality? You are delusional if you think people are going to choose MGK when he's wrong. He's trying to create a narrative that he is the victim. So did Paul Rosenberg make a call and tell them to shelf your project? No comment. Why would he say no comment there? People took that as, yeah, but he just said it in a clever way. I take that as, this man has been so vocal about everything else, but then is silent about that. That's weird to me. Eminem uh, said I, that's I, not true. Eminem told Sway that that No, what, 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 what Eminem said, no, this is, this is actually funny. Mm -hmm. What Eminem said wasn't true was that he uh, didn't make a call in regards to the daughter situation. And you know, that was false. Jimmy Iovine and Puff conference called me at nine in the morning with multiple other people. Eminem did not say that he didn't make a call in regards to the daughter situation. He said he did not get you shelved. I didn't call Diddy. That's what he said. And I believe that. Why would Eminem call Diddy? If anything, he would just say, hey, Paul, call Diddy and tell this nigga to stop talking about my daughter. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't even know why everyone's riding for this man so tough. This is a person who won't even show up to do a real interview. Meaning that uh, Sway works for Shade 45, Come so on. it's all stage, it's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. It's a little weird, man. Is that really weird, though? Why would Eminem help out Breakfast Club? Do you know the numbers that an Eminem video does? Why would I give it to you niggas who are going to ride MGK's when he comes over here and just blatantly lies and contradicts himself? We know how this works. Everyone wants to use you. Well, I think he was contemplating his, his, his thought process was, I don't want to make you any bigger, is what he said. Like, I mean, that's another funny narrative that I hear. I've sold over 20 million records. I've been in 10 movies, four of which come out December to April. It's very hard for me to accept that like this career just butted out of nowhere via him. That doesn't sound like someone who's been blackballed to me. I don't know. But you know, when, when, he, when he did take the shot at you, was it one of those things like that you, you were ready for it because you, you've been feeling like you've been banned for a while, you've been feeling like the little shots have been coming at you, so you were, you were prepared. I don't think anyone's prepared for that. I mean, I'm not a sucker. You're not gonna punk me. I mean, ultimately, that's the that's the ultimate thing. It was just one of those things. I can't help that I that it took this for y'all to see my talent. Did you hear how he paused when he got asked that? Was this planned? I don't think anybody's prepared for that. It's funny because I think you were. I think you're a motherfucking liar. You were trying to poke the bear until he responded. So then you could play the victim. Like he said, you're not gonna punk me. It was just one of those things. Nigga, you've been saying his name for every year since 2012. That sounds like one of those bullies that is like bullying the kid and then he gets his ass whooped on video and then he tries to play like the victim like he was the one who was getting bullied. Manipulation again. Next, we are going to hear the closing arguments from both artists. Hey, somebody grab me some clippers. This fucking beard is weird. Tough talk from a rapper paying millions for security a year. I think my dad's gone crazy. Yeah, Haley, you right. Dad's always mad, cooped up in the studio, yelling at the mic. You sober and bored, huh? I know. I'm about to be 46 years old, dog. Talking about, I'ma call up Trick Trick. Man, you sound like a bitch, bitch. Man, I can handle your shit. You mad about something I said in 2012? Took you six years and a surprise album just to come with a diss? Homie, we get it. We know that you're the greatest rapper alive. Fucking dweeb, all you do is read the dictionary and stay inside. Fuck rap god, I'm the rap devil. Come a bare face with a black shovel like the Armageddon. When the smoke settle, his body next to this instrumental. I'm saying, I'm sick of them sweatsuits and them corny hats. Let's talk about it. I'm sick of you being rich and you still mad. Let's talk about it. All of us single dads from the Midwest, we can talk about it. 
or we can get gully or size up your body and put some white chalk around it. Let's talk about So he talked about Eminem's beard, how Eminem looks funny, because Eminem put out a picture where he had a beard and everyone was like, this doesn't look real. That has to be a fake beard. Why would Eminem do this? People thought it was photoshopped. Uh, turns out it was real. It kind of makes me mad because just looking at myself on the camera, I still can't grow a beard. You know, it's a funny bard and I feel like it would grab a certain audience. Talks about Eminem being rich. He used bars from I Think My Dad's Gone Crazy, which is one of my favorite Eminem songs. I love that song. I think everyone loves that song. That's why he said it. He knew the audience would understand it. He's putting digestible disses out there because that's the world we live in today. So you got to give him props for that. He said, dad's always mad cooped up in the booth yelling at the mic. People talk about a lot on the internet how Eminem yells in his songs, usually in the Eminem hater circles. He said, about to be 46 years old, talking about, I'm going to call up Trick Trick. And you sound like a bitch, bitch. That, I think, is my favorite bar of the entire verse. Probably, it might be one of the best bars of the entire battle. I'm not going to lie. I think everybody liked this part. He called Eminem a dweeb because if you remember, Eminem said that he used to read the dictionary, which is why his vocabulary is so vast. MGK flipped it and made it, you're a nerd. You're the kid I would bully in school. A good energy to come with when you're dissing Eminem. That could only work right now because when he was at his most relevant, he was untouchable. No matter how you approached him, it would not affect him. When this happened, he kind of got humanized. So all that works in MGK's favor. This verse was definitely a good opening verse of the song. Let's continue. Let's talk about the fact you actually blackball a rapper that's twice as young as you. Let's call Sway, ask why I can't go up to Shea 45 because of you. Let's ask Skinnerscope how you had Paul Rosenberg trying to shelf me still can't cover up the facts your last four albums as bad as your selfie now tell me what are you stand for i know you can't stand yourself bro. trying to be the old you so bad you stand yourself let's leave all the beef in the 50 please and you're pushing 50 why you claiming i'ma call puff when you the one that called diddy facts then you went and called jimmy facts the conference called me in the morning they told me you mad about a tweet you wanted me to say sorry i swear to god i ain't believe him please say it ain't so the big bad bully of the rap game can't take a fucking joke oh you want some fucking smoke but not literally you'll choke yeah i'll acknowledge you're the goat but i'm the gunner bitch i got you in the scope don't have a heart attack now somebody help your mans up knees weak of old age the real slim shady can't stand up i'm sick of them sweatsuits and them corny hats let's talk about it i'm sick of you being rich and you still mad let's talk about it both of us sing with ass from the midwest we can talk about it or we can get gully, y'all size up your body and put some white chalk around it. That verse was even better. He talked about deeper things, but he still went back to the internet meme thing, but he did say better lines. He talked about the black ball, whatever, blacklist. I don't, it wasn't black ball, it was blacklisted and it happens. He said, tell me, what do you stand for? I know you can't stand yourself. Trying to be the old you so bad, you stand yourself. So he's referring to Eminem's song, Stan. He was a fan that was obsessed with Eminem. And he's saying that Eminem is such a fan of himself and he's obsessed with the old him so much that he is stand from that song. That's a fire bar. He said, leave all the beef in the 50, Eminem, you're pushing 50. So he's obviously referring to 50 Cent, who was signed to Shady Aftermath in like a joint venture thing. If you remember, 50 Cent started beef with Ja Rule, a bunch of other people, and Eminem basically had to jump in the beef. Didn't have to, but he jumped in the beef and he's saying, stop starting beef. 50 Cent is the one who starts beef, basically. But then he's saying, you're pushing 50, meaning your age. Why are you still out here trying Trying to fight with us young men. I think it may be even deeper than that because anyone who has ever heard Get Rich and I Trying, there's a song called Don't Push Me on that CD and it's 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, and Eminem. It could be a hint to that, you know, like you're pushing 50, don't push me. It could be that. And if it's not, it should be that because it was clever. He said, they told me you're mad about a tweet. I swear to God, I didn't believe him. Say it ain't so. The big bad bully of the rap game can't take a fucking joke. That hit hard because when you really think about it, Eminem used to say crazy things about everybody. It is kind of wild that Eminem took so much offense to a young man calling his daughter hot, but I understand where Eminem is coming from. Machine Gun Kelly should as well because he has a daughter as well. It is crazy that it elicited any response from Eminem. And then he said, don't have a heart attack. Somebody get your mans up. Knees weak of old age. The real Slim Shady can't stand up. Great bar because Eminem has a song with well, the real Slim Shady. Please stand up, obviously. So the real Slim Shady can't stand up like because he's getting so old. There's a lot of age jokes here. And I 
understand why he's doing it because age jokes do actually hit. Young people will look at that and laugh. Old people will hear that and be mad. It was smart, but you may have isolated an audience. But if it's a risk that he's willing to take, let's continue. Hello, Marshall. My name's Colson. You should go back to recovery. I know your ego is hurting just knowing that all of your fans discovered me. Right. He like, damn, he a younger me. Except he dresses better and I'm ugly. Always making fun of me. Stop all the thuggery, Marshall. You living in luxury. Hey, look what you've done to me. Dropped an album just because of me. Damn, you in love with me. You got money, but I'm hungry. I like it this, but you won't say them lyrics out in front of me. Shout out to every rapper that's up under me. Know that I'll never do you like this fuckery. Still bitter after everyone loves you. Pull that wedgie out your dungarees. Hey, I gotta respect the OGs. And I know most of them personally. Hey, but you just a bully acting like a baby. So I gotta read you in nursery. I'm the ghost of the future. And you just have the Scrooge. I said I'm flex, anyone can get it. I ain't know it would be you. I'm sick of them sweatsuits and them corny hats. Let's talk about it. I'm sick of you being rich and you still mad. Let's talk about it. Bob of a single dad's from the Midwest. We can talk about it. Or we can get gully, I'll size up your body and put some white chalk around it. Okay, so that verse was not as good as the first two verses. It kind of was a speed bump, I feel like, because it sounded like all the same points, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there was some good bars. You should go back to recovery. That hit, the beat drop, all that. So he was making a reference to Hi My Name Is. I think that's the name of the song. There's not really much in that verse that hit for me, but let's continue. Ride a shoddy because I got a road is dope. It's a fast road when your idols become your rivals. Yeah. Never hesitate to say it to your face, I'm an asshole. Bitch ass motherfucker. We know you get nervous, rabbit. I see mama's spaghetti all over your sweater. I wish you would lose yourself in the record that you made a decade ago. They were better. According to them, you're a national treasure. To me, you're soft as a feather. The type to be scared to ask Rihanna for a number. Just hold her umbrella, Ella, Ella. I'm not afraid. Okay, Oscar the Grouch, chill on the couch. Fuck. You got an Oscar, damn. Can anyone else get some food in their mouth? For real. They made a movie about you. You and everybody's top ten. You're not getting better with time. It's fine, Eminem. Put down the pen. Or write an apology over the simple fact you had a diss to acknowledge me. I am the prodigy. How could I even look up to you? You ain't as tall as me. Five eight, man. I'm six four. Seven punches hold your head still. Last time you saw eight mile was at home on a treadmill. You were named after a candy. I was named after a gangster. And don't be a sucker and take my verse off of Yellow Wolf's album. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanna feed my daughter. You try to stop the money to support her. You don't wanna always talk about the action. Text me to Addy. I'm pulling up scrapping. And I'm by my fucking self. What's happening? EST captain salute me and shoot me. That's what he's gonna have to do to me when he realizes that it ain't shit he can do to me. Everybody always hated me. This isn't anything new to me. Yeah, there's a difference between us. I got all of my shit without Dre producing me. I know you're not used to me. Usually one of your disses should ruin me. A bitch up from Cleveland, everybody quiet this evening. I'm reading the eulogy. He dropped an album called Kamikaze, so that means he killed him. Alright, he fucked one rapper's girl this week. Don't make me call Kim. I'm sick of them sweatsuits and them corny hats. Let's talk about it. I'm sick of you being rich and you still mad. Let's talk about it. Bob of a single dad from the Midwest. We can talk about it. Or we can get gully, y'all size up your body and put some white chalk around it. So this song didn't need to be four verses, um, but maybe he did it because of Stan. It's like a callback, like, oh, I used to be Stan. I was obsessed with Eminem. There are four verses on that song. I'm putting four verses on this song. But uh, absolutely a good diss. For both of the songs, I'm forcing myself to come up with three positives and three negatives because I don't want it to be biased. So positive number one is he dropped it quickly. I think like four days after Eminem dropped Not Alike, he didn't let the hype go down. He was ready to perform. I absolutely appreciate that as a listener. Positive number two, even though they may not be fully true, he used angles. He tried to appeal to a certain audience. Some of the things he said, he was using talking points that are usually in Eminem hater circles. So that was clever. The third positive is that I think this may go down as one of the best Eminem disses in history. I can't think of anyone else who even came close to humanizing Eminem. So three negatives. Negative number one, he has been talking about Eminem for six years. So why weren't you more prepared why did you only come with disses from eminem hater circles eminem has been out since 96 or something we all know eminem's life there should have been a lot more in the track i believe but number two is that it should have only been three verses the third verse felt like filler he just did the same thing over and over and none of them were really that hard they didn't connect like the other three verses i'm not gonna lie so he should have got rid of that verse and put three verses negative number three is that some of it seems 
seems like it's embellished. A lot of the things that probably hit a certain audience actually took away from the track when he says something like, you're rich, I'm hungry. That's not true because MGK is rich too. What are you talking about? You're trying to put yourself on the level of the Eminem hater who's not a millionaire, but you're living in luxury. So that doesn't connect for me. Saying that Eminem is jealous of you, I just don't believe it. I think it's the exact opposite. Eminem has never not sold. He, this year, got second place most streams and didn't even drop an album this year. If Eminem is washed up, what are the rest of these artists? Because when they're at the top of their game, they're not even close to Eminem. Put the pen down, you're not getting better. He absolutely is. Eminem is literally at the best he's ever been right now. It didn't connect with me. When I hear certain things, it's like, eh. Next, we have Eminem kill shot. Let's get it. You sound like a bitch. bitch. Shut the fuck up. Your fans become your haters. You done? Doing this once. Rihanna just hit me on a text. Last night I left hickeys on her neck. Wait, you just dissed me? I'm perplexed. Insult me in a line, compliment me on the next. Damn, I'm really sorry you want me to have a heart attack. Was watching 8 Mile on my Nauta track. Realized I forgot to call you back. Here's that autograph for your daughter. I wrote it on a starter cap. Stan, Stan, son, listen, man, dad isn't mad, but how you gonna name yourself after a damn gun and have a man bun? Giants woke eyes open, undeniable supply and smoke, got the fire stoke. Say you got me in a scope, but you grazed me. I say one called it in a scope and you swayzy. Okay, so Eminem is obviously levels above technically. I feel like there was a couple bars in there that were punchlines that hit the Nordic track, wrote it on your daughter's starter cap. He's making a call back to Stan saying that MGK is Stan and his daughter is taking the place of Matthew. Diss me in one line, compliment me on the next. Why that's dope that Eminem pointed that out because that did not only happen on the track. It happened throughout all of this time that MGK has been calling out Eminem. Eminem's washed up, but I love him. So it's funny that Eminem points that out for the diss track. It's something that MGK tends to do a lot. You grazed me. I say one called it in a scope and you swayzy. Your reply got the crowd yelling woo. So before you die, let's see who can out petty who with your corny lines. Slim your roll. Out Kelly Ooh, but I'm 45 and I'm still out selling you. By 29, I had three albums that it blew. Now let's talk about something I don't really do. Go in someone's daughter's mouth stealing food. But you're a fucking molehill. Now I'm gonna make a mountain out of you. Oh. This is like a lot of rappers say the type of shit that Jay-Z says. The only difference is it's true for Jay-Z. And that's what makes the bars hit even harder when Jay-Z says it. That's the similar thing here. When he says, oh, you called me old. That's funny because I'm still having a better career than you to this day. You think you're on my level, not even close. You think you're the new me? You're not even close to me. When I was your age, I already had three albums that have blown up. You don't even got one. That is facts. That's facts. He said, let's see who can out petty who. And then he said, let's talk about something I don't do. I don't go in people's mouths taking food out of their daughter's mouths. Actually, in fact, you are too small to even feed your daughter. So let me make you bigger. Let me turn you into a mountain, like treating him bigger than he is. Oh, you're making a mountain out of molehill. Hold chill, like and like you'll put the chrome barrel to my bone marrow. Gonna bitch, you ain't a bow and arrow. Say you run up on me like a phone bill. Spraying lead, playing dead. That's the only time you hold still. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, you think you're gonna shoot me because you're Machine Gun Kelly? You got me in your scope? Is that what it is? Fuck your bullets. You're not even a less threatening weapon. I think bow and arrows is still pretty deadly, but you're not even that. You're not even that. And he said, you're gonna run up on me like a phone bill? Back in the day, if you remember, you had to wait until nine o'clock because your minutes weren't free and your phone bill would get run up. People would have to pay mad money if they talk before nine. So that's funny. He said, you'll run up on me like a phone bill. Spraying lead. Playing dead is the only time you hold still. Hold still, like not move, but also like hold steel which is a gun. So it goes back to the first bar. Oh, you think you're putting the chrome barrel to my bone marrow? You don't even hold still when you are playing dead. I like it. Are you eating cereal or oatmeal? What the fuck's in the bowl, milk? Wheaties or Cheerios? Cause I'm taking a shit in them, Kelly. I need reading material. Dictionary. <laughs> Yo, Slim, your last four albums suck. Go back to recovery. Oh, shoot, that was three albums ago. What do you know? Oops. Make <laughs> facts before you come at me, little goof. Luxury, oh, you broke bitch. Yeah, I had enough money in O2 to burn it in front of you, ho. Younger me, no, you don't whack me. It's funny, but so true. I'd rather be 80-year-old me than 20-year-old you. So that goes back to what he just said. I'm 45, and you think I'm jealous of you? You're Life is a train wreck compared to mine, and my life was a fucking dumpster fire. So, you know.
know, why would I want to be you? I'd rather be 80 year old me after everything I've been through. My life is still better than yours and you have your youth. I'd rather be 80 and die soon than live longer and be you. <laughs> That's a wild this. And then the go back to recovery. Your last dope album was four albums ago. Oops, recovery is only three albums ago. That was a great point to make because it just shows that MGK was grabbing disses from the internet and putting them into the song. You didn't even listen to them clearly because you don't even know what you're talking about. You're just saying things. You heard someone say recovery was his best album. So then you came out and said, go back to recovery. And that's what Eminem just proved by saying that. Till I'm hitting old age, still can fill a whole page with a 10 year old's rage. Got more fans than you in your own city. Little kitty, go play. Feel like I'm babysitting Lil Tay. Got the ditty okay, so you stitch a whole day. Shooting a video just to fucking dig your own grave. Got you itch your own wake. I'm the Billy Goat. You ain't never made a list. Next to no Biggie, no J. Next to Taylor Swift and the Iggy Ho. You about to really blow. Kelly, they'll be putting your name next to Ty, next to Benzino. Bye, motherfucker, like the last motherfucker saying alien vein, alien brain. Satanist. My biggest flop, so your greatest hits. The game's mod again, and ain't nothing changed but the lock. So before I slay this bitch, I'm gonna give Jade a kiss. Damn, bro. I should have paused it way before because he just went through like multiple schemes and multiple punches. Damn. So he said, You got the Diddy okay, so you spent your whole day shooting a video just so you can dig your own grave because he had the shovel in his hand while he's walking around in the video dissing Eminem. I think it was like a homage to, I said, I'm sorry, mama, and burying his mom for the whole video at the playground. But Eminem used that visual and said you were actually digging your own grave and then he said Kelly they'll be putting your name next to Ja next to Benzino died like the last motherfucker who said Haley in vain if you were around back then then you would know that they talked about Eminem's daughter multiple times on songs your girl's a prostitute your mom is a slut so I wonder where Haley's gonna be when she grows up pretty crazy diss but when you bring kids into it you know it, it gets rough because that was really dissing the daughter I'm pretty sure Haley's doing just fine with her life she has a podcast i'm pretty sure now but uh my biggest flops are your greatest hits which is a fact i was saying that before machine gun kelly's best day is not even close to eminem's worst day the game's mine ain't nothing changed but the lock so before i slay this bitch i moi give jade a kiss and his daughter's name is Haley jade jade a kiss but also referring to the locks because that's the group that jade a kiss was in so yeah let's continue gotta wake up labor day to this being rich shamed by some prick using my name for clickbait in a state of bliss because I said his goddamn name. Now I got a cock back aim. Yeah, bitch, pop champagne to this. Okay. I was I didn't want to pop. I didn't want to pop so early. I didn't want to pause so early, but those four bars right there, that sums up the entire situation. He said, I got to wake up Labor Day to this, getting rich shamed by some prick using my name for clickbait in a state of bliss because I said his goddamn name. That is literally what is happening. MGK tried to get Eminem to say his name for years and then Eminem finally did and he was so ready to respond four days he dropped a track because he was like this is what we've been preparing for and Eminem knows that that's why he said pop champagne it is because this is a celebration that I even responded to you and we all know it it's a stimulus package to be honest except MGK went on to a whole different genre, but he did become more successful afterwards, so it is what it is. Cause I said his goddamn name, now I got a cock back aim, yeah, bitch, pop champagne to this. Uh, it's your moment, this is it, as big as you're gonna get, so enjoy it. Had to give you a career to destroy it. Mm. Lethal injection, go to sleep six feet deep. I give you a beat for the effort, but if I was three foot eleven, you'd look up to me, and for the record, you would suck a dick to fucking be me for a second. It's a fact. Machine Gun Kelly does want to be Eminem. It is what it is. Like a boss, like to get on my channel. Give your life to be a solidified. This motherfucking shit is like Rambo when he's out of bullets. So what good is a fucking machine gun when it's out of ammo? Uh. Had enough of this tatted up mumble rap. I had a fucking him and I battle. He'll have to fuck him in my flannel. I'll give him my sandals because he knows long as I'm shady, he's going to have to live in my shadow. Exhausting, uh. letting off on my offspring Like a gun barrel, bitch get off me You dance around it like a sombrero We can all see your fucking salty Cause young Gerald's balls deep inside a Halsey So that's the only bar I think may be a lackluster bar Because as far as I know It was g Easy that was dating Halsey And MGK was smashing as his side chick So I don't think MGK actually had much investment in Halsey I think he just got the cheeks, you know So I don't think Eminem is right on that But that shady bar, I give him my sandals Cause 
because he knows long as I'm shady, he's gonna have to live in my shadow. Like shade, shadow, like a shadow is shade. Oh my goodness. And he's shady. And sandals because it's a summer day, you know what I mean? Crazy. And he said, what is a machine gun when it's out of ammo? I think that goes back to what I was saying when I was saying, you've been trying to get Eminem to respond to you for six years. Why didn't you have more disses than you're old, you dress funny, you're rich, you know? You really don't have much ammo, even though you've been a fan of Eminem since you were born, pretty much, you know? That's actually a great point. The way Eminem says it sounds effortless, but the meaning behind the bars is reality. Your red sweater, your black leather, you dress better, I rap better, <laughs> that a death threater, a love letter, uh. little white toothpick thinks it's over a pick, I just don't like you prick, thanks for dissing me. Now I had an excuse on the mic to write, not a like, but really I don't care who's in the right, but you're losing the fight you pick. Mm. Who else wanted Kells? Attempt fails. Button L's. Fucking nails. In these coffins as soft as cotton nail. Kill shot, I will not fail. I'm with the doc still. But this idiot's boss pops pills and tells him he's got skills. But Kells, the day you put out a hit, the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out, they got pop kill. Eh? I'm sick of you being whack and still using that motherfucking auto tune. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm sick of your mumble rap mouth. Need to get the cock about it before we can even talk about it. Talk about it. I'm sick of your blonde hair and earrings. Just cause you look in the mirror and think that you're Marshall Mathers. Marshall Mathers. Don't mean you are and you're not about it. So just leave my dick in your mouth and keep my daughter out of you. Fucking. Oh. And I'm just playing, Diddy. You know I love you. Okay, so I'm gonna give my three positives. I'm gonna give my three negatives. First positive, he just kept it real the entire time. That was all true bars, which is why it hit even harder for me. That's my favorite thing when people can frame real life as entertaining. That means you're a good storyteller and Eminem is a great storyteller. Obviously, we all know that. He can make real life actually hit any way he wants it to. He can frame it and make you feel bad. He could frame it and make you feel sad. He could do anything. That's a talent that he has and he did that here. He said nothing but reality. You are not on my level you keep talking about how much money i have i do have money you know how i got it being better than you and you know it that's why you feel away do you want to say i'm washed up what does that make you this is big big boy little boy big bank little bank icon tricon whatever that means i don't even know what that means positive number two he pretty much responded to everything that mgk said he went like in order almost you know besides the trick trick bar i don't think he addressed that one but that was mgk's best bar i wish he would have addressed it he basically responded to everything else so that's positive number two positive number three is that he didn't wait until his next album to put the shit out because he could have had people buy his next album to see what he was going to say as a response to mgk but he broke his usual tradition and dropped a track i think it was like 10 days after rap devil which is respectable for a person as big as eminem because that's not how the rap game used to work my three negatives are basically what i said in the no love reaction or the drop the world reaction about Eminem. Eminem's style is so complex that it's not easily digestible to the average listener and I think that bites him you know because he absolutely went crazy on this but I feel like a lot of it's gonna go over people's heads. People aren't gonna catch everything because people don't have the attention span or they have virgin eyes basically when it comes to rap a lot of people so it won't hit the same way that MGK's did because MGK was very very straightforward with everything he said. Negative number two is as dope as this song was it didn't feel like Eminem Eminem was putting his full effort into it. It felt like it was kind of rushed, which it probably was. It felt like he just wasn't fully going hard, but that maybe might have been because he doesn't know anything about NGK. All he knows is that he dissed his daughter and that he was signed to the same label. He probably doesn't pay attention to MGK's career at all, so he really doesn't know what to even talk to him about. He talked to him about the G-Eazy thing, which clearly he was misinformed and didn't even know that it was G-Eazy's girlfriend and not MGK, so he really don't care about MGK's life, which is probably why he didn't have enough invested into it not a like was a better diss track than kill shot in my head negative number three is that i didn't like this beat as much as i liked mgk's beat mgk's beat to me was more digestible it was actually just a better beat to me altogether i'm not gonna lie shout out ronnie j now i want to go through the five categories that i came up with to decide who actually won this battle definitively so the five categories are technical ability punchlines, personals or reality bars creativity and re play value for the first category technical ability i'm gonna give it to eminem obviously because he is way more technical
technically gifted than MGK. Not only on this track, but on every other track, but definitely on this track as well. He clearly was doing acrobatics and all these type of things that MGK could never do. As far as punchlines go, I would give that to MGK because he had a lot more funny punchlines, the trick trick bar. I could go back and go through them, but if you don't agree with me, I understand. But to me, I feel like MGK's punchlines did hit harder than Eminem's because Eminem has a style that makes it hard for people to digest it. So for me, I did digest it <laughs> and it was good. But uh, MGK said a bunch of good one lines. You know what I mean? Eminem had like structured bars that were all crazy and intertwined and shit. MGK had good like just punchlines. The next category is reality bars slash personals. And that's obviously going to go to Eminem because his real life shits on MGK. <laughs> it is what it is. MGK said a bunch of surface level stuff. You're rich. You're jealous. You're mad. You're old. You can't dress. Okay, that's cool. But Eminem says, if we're talking numbers, bro, you are an ant. And that's reality. So I got to give that to Eminem. Next category is creativity. And I will give that to Eminem as well because MGK, like I said, he used a bunch of overused talking points that I've heard on the internet for years. And category five is replay value. I would give that to MGK because I feel like his song overall is a more easier listen. It's a more catchy listen than Eminem's song. And that's what replay value is based on. Whether or not you would go back and play it, want to learn it. Eminem's song is dope and he does a bunch of acrobatics, but it's like, I don't like the beat enough for me to listen to it again. MGK's song was a good song altogether and he put a hook on it. He put verses. It was drops. There was all type of stuff in it that made it a better song with replay value. So those are the five categories and according to what I see here, it's 3-2. Eminem won. Technical ability, creativity, and personals. MGK won punchlines and replay value. So, as far as the battle goes, I'm gonna have to give it to my man Marshall. It's not even a surprise, obviously. He is the GOAT. As far as the court case, I'm going to have to give it to Eminem and say Eminem was in the right, even though he said he didn't care in kill shot. He actually didn't do anything wrong in this entire situation. MGK, I feel like, exploited a situation. He, he created narratives. He tried to to manipulate a bunch of people to make it seem like Eminem was trying to hold him back and I don't believe that's the case I really don't I believe there's consequences to actions accountability so there's no way that I could look at this story and be like MGK is in the right so my official verdict is that Eminem was in the right and he won the battle it is what it is make sure you like comment subscribe hit the notification bell so if I win a ride you're out